Hello and welcome to Sunrise Radio. My name is Helen Westerman and I'm the Head of Local Campaigns here at the NSPCC. I'm delighted to be able to speak with you today on behalf of our organisation. It's been a really tough few weeks for the country and the wider world and we've all had to adjust to the way we live and work during these really difficult times. For the NSPCC and Childline that's meant some big changes for us. As you might expect, um, calls from Childline Children to Childline haven't stopped. In fact, in the first three weeks of April alone, we've delivered over 1,700 counselling sessions to children and young people concerned about coronavirus. Children are contacting us via the phone and online, struggling with feelings of loss, isolation and concern for their loved ones. We've seen an increase in the number of first time callers that are turning to Childline. And we're also continuing to support young people who may regularly be in touch with us. For some of these young people, life is pr pretty bleak at the moment. And we hear from children talking of self-harm and on occasion, those with suicidal feelings. But children aren't just contacting Childline about the pandemic. Sadly, abuse and neglect don't stop in a global health crisis. During the past week, Childline's delivered 363 counselling sessions where children have experienced physical, sexual, emotional abuse or neglect. And that's up a fifth from the week before. Counselling sessions about physical and emotional abuse have increased by 36 and 31% during this time. So we're working really hard to be still here for children who need us. In all of our Childline bases, our staff and volunteers have had to adjust to a new way of working. For example, bringing in extra headsets so no one has to share, restricting numbers in the counselling rooms. And due to the impact of the virus and drop by 30% of volunteer hours due to counsellors having to self-isolate, sadly, we've had to close the nighttime service for the first time in our history. It's also been really challenging continuing to try and fund our services in the usual way. So our fun events like sponsored physical challenges like the London Marathon or our coffee mornings have all had to stop. However, it's vital that we're still available to any child who needs us. So we've launched our emergency appeal called We're Still Here for Children. We're asking those of you who can to please visit the NSPCC website and donate £10 to help fund vital services so uh, the charity can continue to answer calls and be here for the young people who desperately need to talk to us, especially when home isn't their safe place. As I mentioned, there's been an, a number of increasing calls day by day to ch Childline from children concerned about the virus, concerned for themselves and their loved ones and scared of losing people dear to them. They've talked about struggling to cope with the isolation worried about exams or missing exams and missing out on the rights associated with leaving secondary school. For some, they're scared of living in abusive households from which they can see no escape. Knowing how to talk to your child about their mental health or recognising the signs when they might be struggling can be really tricky, especially in these strange times when we're all feeling a bit scared, uncertain and at a loss sometimes. It's a roller coaster of emotions for us and for, for, for many of the children and young people we're talking to. Realising your own child may be struggling can be tough for parents. It can feel like it's your fault. As parents, we just want to make things right or perfect for our children. and Sometimes that just isn't possible. It's not our fault and it's certainly not theirs. But remember, Childline is a really valuable resource for children. If as parents you're struggling to ha have such emotive conversations. Some children don't naturally feel comfortable talking with their parents about how they're feeling. They might feel embarrassed slightly ashamed or not want to add to the burdens that they see us parents experiencing. Whatever the reason, Childline is there on 0800 1111. There's also a lot of uncertainty in the world at the moment. There won't be always be answers to the questions your, your children are asking and the internet is valuable for children staying connected, informed and entertained. I know with my own daughter that it's been a lifeline. There'll be lots of information about coronavirus out there, but lots of misinformation too. And I would suggest talking to your child about recognising this and suggest they only visit trustworthy news sites, such as the BBC's Newsround site. If they're struggling to talk to you for whatever reason, encourage them to use Childline's message boards to talk to other young people. This online community is absolutely terrific for the support and comfort these, people can off these um, young people can offer each other. The message boards are moderated by our trained professionals 
So we know that it's a really safe space for children and young people to share their experiences and to get and offer each other support. Here at the NSPCC, we're growing increasingly concerned about the number of children who will experience abuse or neglect due to the impact of coronavirus, with families really struggling with lockdown, job losses, school closures. We know that calls to domestic abuse hotlines are increasing at, increasing at alarming rates, but at the same time, councils across the UK are seeing a decline in the referrals of children accessing their services. For many children living in abusive households, school would have been a refuge, somewhere they could have been fed, for example, and concerns for their welfare raised if needed. It is a major concern that while schools are closed to 90% of pupils and other community-based services are suspended, many children and adults will be more isolated, exposed and distanced from vital support networks and at risk of abuse. But the NSPCC is still here. We continue to work supporting children, whether it be through our Childline service, our adult helpline, and the services that we offer right across the country to children and families. We pledge to continue to be that voice for all those children who can't speak up. And I would encourage you all in these difficult times to be there with us too. We all have a really vital role to play in keeping our most vulnerable children safe. Social distancing, self-isolation and quarantine can cause stress and changes in everyone's behaviour. Spotting the signs of abuse might be more difficult and it can be difficult to know for certain if something's wrong. But if you're worried about a child, even if you're unsure, or don't want to be seen as getting anyone into trouble, you can also always contact our helpline to speak to one of our counsellors confidentially. Call us on 0808 800 5000. Abuse is always wrong and should always be reported. Perhaps you've noticed aggressive or repeated shouting. You can hear the sounds of hitting or things being broken, children crying for long periods of time, very young children left alone, or outdoors by themselves, or children looking dirty, maybe not changing their clothes, or children that you know seemingly being withdrawn or anxious. These signs don't necessarily mean that a child is being abused. There could be lots of other th uh, things happening in that family's life which could be affecting that child's behaviour. But by contacting us, we can help you assess the situation. As local areas adapt to the new challenges, it's even more vital that we play our part in checking in with families and by reaching out for help and support and advice from our local authorities or the NSPCC helpline if we have concerns for a child's wellbeing or we think a family could really do with additional support. Our helpline number again, 0808 800 5000. In these unprecedented times, the internet is helping so many of us stay connected. I know for me, it's absolutely vital in keeping me in touch with my friends and family right across the country. For children, they're no different. It's also an essential aid to their learning. But with the positives, there are also negatives. Tech companies, which for the most part have failed to bring in inappropriate, uh, appropriate measure, measures to keep children safe, have had to scale back on their moderators, creating that perfect storm for online abusers. From the increased numbers of calls to Childline from young people who talk about feeling isolated and lonely during the lockdown, we've recently revealed from an NSPCC survey that lonely children are twice as likely to be groomed online, making it even more worrying times. Abusers will often target children who have expressed vulnerability online, mainly through th sharing their thoughts and feelings on social media or on live streams, which many children are likely to be doing now during the current health crisis. Children and young people can be groomed online by a stranger or perhaps more scarily by someone that they know. This could be a family member, a friend, someone's targeted them, like a teacher, faith group leader or sports coach. When a child's groomed online, the abusers may hide who they are by sending photos or videos of other people. So it's important we as parents and carers talk about privacy settings, blocking our children's locations and asking our kids to think about whether they really know who they're talking to online. Are they being share aware? And by that, I mean, are they sharing intimate details about themselves, intimate details, that information that abusers can exploit to gain their trust? We know that the best online safety chats are relaxed and regular. And if it's helpful, why not make a use of a family agreement template we've created at the NSPCC so you can decide on some ground rules together? Parents and children, once you've agreed the rules, why not stick it on your fridge or wall and come back to it regularly to see if it's working? 
We know that a lot of young people like the apps and games and sites because they're fun, and they allow them to be creative, they're interesting, but also because they're parent free. So if you spend too much time trying to control or restrict what they do online, your child might stop talking to you about what they do, who they're chatting to and what they're seeing. That's why it's best to have those regular conversations showing an interest in their online lives, not just by talking about all the negative aspects of their online world. We just sound really out of touch if we do that. If you're unsure about anything, privacy settings, a particular game or app, or your child shared something that they later come to regret, or you just want some advice about online safety generally, please bring the O2 and NSPCC advice line to speak directly with one of our experts. That's 0808 08 800 502, and that's available free of charge 10 till 4 p.m. every day. Here at the NSPCC, we're off also offering free webinars on online safety to businesses, community groups, parents, and other family members. These free sessions are a chance to learn key, key online safety advice, how to talk to your children about their online world, and some key tools that families can use. If you're interested in booking a webinar for a group or want to attend as an individual, please email parentworkshops at nspcc.org.uk. We talk with parents all the time and it's perfectly understandable to find your child's online world and the potential harms a bit overwhelming. I can certainly sympathise with that. There seems to be new games and online trends popping up daily, almost every hour, and some of the words used in games and apps can seem really alien too. But chats about online safety with your children can be really simple. And actually, you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to know the details of a particular app or game. Instead, you can use your curiosity to start the conversation. One top, top tip is if they can't tell you about their friends online, ask them, do they really know them? Are they who they say they are? A great way to start conversation is playing our interactive game, Parents versus Kids, which you can find on the O2 website or via Amazon Alexa simply by um, asking them to play parents versus kids. It's a great fun game to play between parents and children to find out what you know, what they know, and perhaps what you don't know. We know that sometimes kids find it hard to talk to their parents. They don't want to worry us. They're concerned that parents might make, make a big issue um, out of a situation or handle it in a way that they find embarrassing. They might also be worried you'll take their tech away if they share their concerns. So it's always worth reassuring them that they can talk to you or another trusted member of the family, or they can always call Childline to talk through their concerns. During these unprecedented times, remember that children will experience both positive and negative feelings, both offline and online. So it's crucial to be able to talk through their emotions and not to be dismissive, as these feelings are real, certainly for the young person involved. Be calm, honest and informed about the facts. And most importantly, just keep talking. Those everyday chats about online safety and your child's feelings can really make a difference. For further information about keeping kids safe online, we have our online safety booklets. They're available in various languages, including Urdu, Punjabi, Gujarati and Bengali. And you can get them by visiting www.o2.co.uk forward slash help forward slash NSPCC. I'm coming to the end of my slot now, but before I finish, I'd just like to thank you for your time today and to thank Sunrise Radio for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. If you can help support the NSPCC in Childline, please do visit our webpage and help us still be there for all the children who need us today. At this uncertain time when children's lives have changed so dramatically, the NSPCC needs to be there as a reassuring voice for those worried about their children and for the most vulnerable in society. Sadly, we know that for many children, home isn't a safe place and they need our childline counsellors more than ever. This is the greatest challenge we faced in decades and we do need your help to ensure that we can still be here for all children. Thank you so much for watching.